Hey, this is Aaron from AaronOnAutos.com. Today I have a really interesting question. This is from Victor. Victor wants to know about wheelbases. Victor asks, does a longer wheelbase make a vehicle more stable? That's an excellent question because uh, just right off the top of your head you would assume that would, but it doesn't. So uh, it's a yes and no answer. The r it's okay. So I have to break it down. This has to do with physics and with the physics of a moving object and an automobile. Uh, so the way an automobile is shaped, you have four tires, two of them turn in order to make it turn, uh, and then you have the vehicle stability that, that's, that's uh, created by, that, by those factors. So when the front wheels turn, the rest of the vehicle follows, and that creates physical movement in one direction or another. So if I, if I grab a vehicle like this uh, little Porsche 911, this is off the wall ahead of me. I have a, I have a rack of these Lego speed bottles up there. Uh, if, if I grab this and you see the little guy in there, this little driver? So if that little driver in there, if he turns the wheel, the front wheels turn, right? When the front wheels turn, the vehicle turns in that direction. The vehicle's physics, if you're looking at it from the top, so the wheels turn and the vehicle starts to turn and that tilts it, right? So the vehicle starts putting pressure on that outside corner as it turns. That's part of vehicle stability. So you're accounting for that. The wheelbase itself is only a part of that equation. So these two wheels, how far apart they are, is only part of it. The width of the wheelbase, right? So the vehicle track is what that's called. This part right here also plays a big factor. Both of those have to be in balance. So you have to have all those wheels in balance with each other and the vehicle's own dynamics. So this Porsche is a mid-engine vehicle. The engine would be located right here. That balances the vehicle beautifully, right? Gives it a nice, nice balance. If you were to put a fulcrum right here, it would stay on top of it. Doesn't work with the Lego model, FYI. So, <laughs> uh, and so what that means is that the vehicle itself also has less chance of tipping. Then you have to figure out the center of gravity. The center of gravity in a, 50, in a, perf, a perfectly weighted car, a car that is perfectly 50-50, will be low and in the middle. So it would be right here, right? If the car has, is taller, say it's an SUV or a pickup truck, then it's up here. It's higher, right? Because there's more, it's, there's more space between basically the vehicle and the ground. The higher it is, the higher the center of gravity. So all of those things go together. Now, if you look at a, a great example is a uh, Formula One car. I don't have a model of a Formula One car. But a Formula One car is a beautiful example of how all of this is put together for uh, automotive application. So it's an extreme, and it, it, it very, very much uh, illustrates. Formula One, is, the Formula One cars are designed to have a short wheelbase, a wide track, fat tires, right, and aerodynamics that press them down. Those aerodynamics pushing down, plus all the other factors, make them the most high-speed capable vehicles uh, on the road, right, that are using tarmac outside of very short burst speed machines. So uh, uh, in the scheme of things, for longer ve for, for vehicles that move and turn, Formula One is pretty much as fast as it gets. So if you think about that, those cars are made for an extreme. They are made for speeds averaging over 100 miles per hour. The average car on the road, including this one, if it were a real one, they're actually made for speeds well under that. The average speed of a vehicle on the road today is actually only about 45 or 50 miles an hour because a lot of us drive around town plus the highway. So the dynamics are slightly different. We tune the car to be sub 100. We tune, the, for mo most manufacturers, are tuning a car to feel really good somewhere around 55 or 60 miles an hour because that is the highest speed most people will, will achieve regularly. So for, the, for a large portion of their driving. Now we might think that that's way too slow because we're on the freeway and it's a 75 mile an hour speed limit. But on the freeway at 75 miles an hour, the curves are very gentle. You're not going to feel those dynamics that much. Most of the time you feel a car's dynamics when you're driving are actually at slower speeds. When you're around town making hard corners to get into a parking lot, turning sharply because you're, 
you're making a right hand turn at a light, uh, something like that. Those are the situations where you really feel the car's dynamics. Very few of us, I'm one of the lucky ones that I get to just go out and pick a highway and drive in a two lane road somewhere with twists and elevation changes and stuff and have fun. Most people don't do that. And that's why vehicles are tuned the way they are. So getting back to the longer wheelbase question, a longer wheelbase can add more stability, but it has to be in conjunction with a wider vehicle track and a lower center of gravity. All those things have to come together. The vehicle's balance is a proportion of weight distribution and those wheelbase and track functions. So all of that has to come together for the vehicle to be more stable. The more those things are in tune, the more stable the vehicle. The less they're in tune, the less stable the vehicle. So that was kind of a long answer, Victor, I'm sorry, but I had to cover a lot of stuff. Hopefully this answers it. So if you have a question, you think I can answer it, uh, you can find me. Go to AaronOnAutos.com, hit me up there. There's a, there's a contact form. Uh, it's totally anonymous if you want it to be. There is a, you can find me uh, through email there. You can find me here on the channel. Just leave a, leave a message. Uh, there's a way to send me messages or uh, leave a comment down below to ask your question. Find me on Facebook, Twitter, etc., etc. Just tag me, make sure I get it. Uh, you can DM me if we're Twitter friends, you can, all that stuff. So look me up, hit me up, I'll try to answer your question. All right, this has been Aaron. Talk to you again soon.